Liverpool have secured their place in the final of the EFL Cup as they beat Fulham on aggregate to run it back against Chelsea to the 2021-2022 final. In today's video, we'll discuss the five major talking points from the game, whilst also going over a bit of transfer news. There is so much to cover in today's video. And hello everybody, welcome back to the channel guys, I hope you're all well. Before we do get into today's video, as always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. With victory over Indonesia on Wednesday, Japan booked their place in the last 16 of the Asia Cup, meaning Wataru Endo will be in Qatar for at least another week. As tournament favourites, it was planned for and expected that Japan would get out of their group. However, eyebrows were raised when they lost 2-1 to Iraq in their second group game. A 3-1 win over Indonesia has since meant they have qualified for the next round, though within their next match potentially against South Korea on January 31st. Iraq's dramatic late 3-2 win over Vietnam meant Japan could only finish second in the group, second place with six points from their three games. They will now face the winner of Group E, which could be any of Jordan, South Korea or Bahrain. The Samurai Blue will know their opponents on Thursday when South Korea face Malaysia and Jordan play Berlin. In terms of Endo's individual performances as captain of his country, he'll be hoping to improve in the knockout phases. He himself hasn't played too poorly, but the team is yet to really get going. Their defeat against Iraq came as a surprise, but Endo did manage a consolation goal in injury time. As the skipper, Endo has played the full game in each of their fixtures, the first of which was a 4-2 win over Vietnam, in which ex-Liverpool forward Minamino scored twice. After the loss versus Iraq though, Minamino was subsequently left out to the final group match against Indonesia. So far, Endo has missed the following Liverpool matches due to the Asian Cup. Arsenal 0, Liverpool 2, Liverpool 2, Fulham 1, Bournemouth 0, Liverpool 4, Fulham 1, Liverpool 1. As a result of progression to the last 16, he will miss Liverpool vs Norwich, Liverpool vs Chelsea. If Japan were to reach the final, he would miss Arsenal vs Liverpool, Liverpool vs Burnley. In other news, Liverpool could allow Polish winger Matthias Musiorski to leave the club this January, with two championship sides touted with a permanent interest. Musiorski has been on Merseyside for almost four years, but his time with the Reds is coming to a close as he nears the end of his contract. But while the 20-year-old, who failed to break into the first team despite catching the eye in the academy, can leave on a free this summer, an exit could be negotiated sooner. That comes with championship clubs Birmingham City and Leeds both linked with Moose for a player once nicknamed the Polish Messi. Reports claim new Birmingham manager Tony Mowbray is interested in bringing Muzioski to St Andrews with a youngster described as a potential option. Monday saw Football Insider tout Leeds as another option for the Poland Under-21 international, explaining that several clubs have already expressed their own interest. Muzioski was slated to join Austrian side TSV Hartberg on a free transfer last summer, only for a deal to break down amid reports that Liverpool changed their demands in seeking a fee. He has remained a key player for the under-21s through much of the season so far, scoring 6 goals in 13 outings, though he has not been involved in the last 3 games. His agent will have been instructed to find a new club, though in November he revealed that the versatile forward was not interested in a move back to Poland. He said, We signed a contract with a condition that I would not persuade him to return to Poland. I don't want to persuade him to return to Poland, but he has the most offers from his homeland. Most clubs want him, but I think he should go to the Netherlands, Belgium or maybe Switzerland. It would appear that Musioski could now stay in England instead, and though he has just six months left on his terms, Liverpool would likely ask interested clubs for a fee. His could be one of a number of moves from the academy in the final days of the January transfer window, with James Balgazi joining Kilmarnock and Harvey Blair attracting interest from home and abroad. Liverpool secured passage to the Carabao Cup final as they beat Fulham 3-2 an aggregate victory with a faith in Gerald Quansar vindicated in the second leg. In this part of the video we'll discuss the five major talking points from the clash. Reds firmly over away day blues. There were so many supporters hugely concerned when Liverpool kicked off this season with just four wins from their first ten away games and they were not being entirely unreasonable given that indicated a long-term trend with the previous campaign having brought just 9 victories from 26 fixtures on the road. Fortunately, Jurgen Klopp's side seemed to have finally got over their struggles away from Anfield, a claim supported by the manner in which they got through this potentially tricky trip to Craven Cottage. They have now won 5 of their last 7 away games, with a draw here effectively a win, leaving the only blot on their copybook as a meaningless but narrow loss for a much-changed team at Union saint gilles with their home form always reliable, this is a change that bodies incredibly well for their trophy hopes this term. Kwanzaa, trust no longer in doubt. 
There can be no stronger evidence that Gerald Quinsar is viewed as a genuine long-term option by Klopp than his use in games like this. Yes, the German is keen to protect Canate from the muscle injury he tends to pick up, but he would rather take the risk than go with a player he does not only trust. And the fact that Quinsar continues to justify his selection, putting performances of maturity way beyond his 20 years. In a game that saw Fulham make it nervy later on, the defenders stood firm, clocking up seven clearances, seven recoveries, and of course an assist. No wonder the manager is ready to throw him in. Gravenberg takes another step forward. After Curtis Jones had narrowly avoided muscle strain at Bournemouth, Klopp took a sensible decision to instead give Ryan Gravenberg a chance to start here. But there's always a risk involved in using the Dutchman given that the start of his Liverpool career had been defined by inconsistency. You often don't know what you're going to get. However, he put on a steady, if unspectacular, performance, which represented a welcome change from the highs and lows he can occasionally offer across a single game. Gravenberg completed 89% of his passes, won 5 out of 8 duels, and posted 6 recoveries and 5 interceptions across the 90 minutes. These are exactly the sort of solid numbers Klopp likes from his midfielders, and will do the youngsters' chances of earning further starts with a world of good. Klopp extends his incredible semi-final record. Where any Liverpool fan worried about not possessing a clear enough aggregate lead coming into the second leg, the nerves would surely have been eased by a look at Klopp's record in the semi-finals for this club. Thanks to success here, it now shows a ridiculous 9 victories from a total of 10 last 4 ties across a range of different competitions. The only exception came in the 2016-17 when Southampton earned victory over Reds team that was still on the journey to becoming a winning machine. Of course, nobody remembers the losing finalists and so getting for a semi is just half the job. But you don't half increase your chances of lifting silverware when you are consistently good at this stage of a competition. Things can only get better. With the semi-final tie effectively wrapped up the moment Luis Diaz grabbed his early goal, the most significant aspect of Liverpool's evening was arguably the sight of Andy Robertson warming up on the touchline. Make no mistake, the Reds have coped remarkably well with an increasingly lengthy list of absentees over the last couple of months, but they could do without having to keep coming through such tests and getting some key men back into the fold as soon as possible. Robertson's involvement and the imminent returns of Trent Alexander-Arnold and Dominic Zaboslai represent a good start on that front. It could be that they are eased back in as early as Sunday at home to Norwich. Liverpool fans, what do you make of us getting to the final of the EFL Cup and do you think we'll beat Chelsea once again? Yes or no? Let me know down there in the comment section below. That brings us to the end of today's video. As always, please do smash that like button and subscribe to the channel for daily Liverpool content. Thank you and I'll see you all next time. Take care. Peace.